I did say I wanted to plant a lot more strawberries, but I ran out of space. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how my dad built these planter boxes. And of course, I got a bunch of strawberries inside of them. Let's go. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, house plants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And in case you're wondering why I have some keys hanging around my neck, it is because I lose them. I lose everything. And you know, if you have ADHD or something else of the nature where you have a tendency of losing a lot of your stuff, you're gonna lose your keys and your glasses, your contacts, and your eyeliner. And that's what exactly has happened to me right now. So if I don't have my keys around my neck, I will literally lose my keys. So there you go. All right, I'm gonna put them back here. So now all you do is you see the ring. But just know, every time you see that, I got some keys hanging around my neck somewhere. If you see in my last week's video, I planted up a bunch of strawberries on the side of my house, but I had a lot of leftover strawberries and I'm thinking to myself, where am I gonna put them? The space, I get the most sun right here in the front of my house. So I said, why not put some strawberries in the front of my house? Now I just need some planter boxes with no money. So how in the world am I gonna make that happen? What's a gal to do when she has no money to go buy some new planter boxes? And of course I have to be bougie like that and I love to have that wood look. So I went to my dad's house to see what kind of materials he has hanging around because he kind of like collects a bunch of stuff and I knew I'd find something over there for free. Let's go to dad's house. Oh, this is great stuff. This is beaded stuff. Look, it just locks one onto the other. Bro, that's the height. That's it. Yeah. Okay, and you snap them together. Bam! Yo, it. and all you gotta do is just reinforce it a little bit and then yeah, you're good well, to go. You the... Like it! Look, free! Free! What are you gonna do with it? Well, I was... You never know what I'm gonna exactly. do. Exactly. Me, for yeah. my strawberries. But I have plenty there. Look at that. That wood is actually, well, like, oh. part of his door. Yeah, right and what else? Does, okay? Oh, yeah, look at that. His door. Well, the one that's missing, the one that's missing over there is now part of your planter box. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that means you need two more of these. For the bottom. I do. So that's four more. I'm on it. I'm on it. I say you put screws this way. Cool. I'm down. So that means the bottom has to be longer than the top. Shorter. So it can Oh, so it can fit inside. Inside. And the screws will go this way. Right. And it'll be it'll hold the box better than if you put screws from the bottom. Eventually it'll I know what you mean. So we have to subtract. True. Whatever this is. For the width, subtract the width of this. Yes, twice. It's okay, so look, three quarters, okay? Three quarters. So you would subtract three quarters from the 48 inches. How much inches. is three quarter and three quarter? 150. Exactly, one and a half. One and a half. All right, so we subtract one and a half from these here. Remember, right. no, no, okay, right now, what you're forgetting is that we haven't done the sides yet. No, we haven't. So the sides are going to go inside the box. Yeah. Right? That's why... The sides are going to go inside the box? I thought the bottom was going to go inside the box. And the sides too. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Lunch. 46 and a half. Because we're going to put the ends inside the panels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with it. I'm with it. You choose that. You can put them on the outside. But you just put them on the inside better because you won't see the edges from the front of the box. Smart. So when you paint it, you know, you won't see, right. you won't see that. Okay? That's what he's referring to. What? Right there, like um, additional supports. He called this a crete or a cleat or something. Where? This inside, that makes sense. Yes, of course. Look, you know, we use this stuff. Look, so this would have pulled apart right here, right? See it? Oh, it would have. It would have. Oh, that's right, because it's split. Plumbing, plumbing strap. Yes, plumbing strap. that worked. And this, it doesn't need anything because it's weight, you know, Oh my gosh, it looks great. It doesn't need anything. It's not going to uh, no, you know, double, double, I mean, uh, bubble out or whatever All you call right, that. So here was the little, the little trick that I made. Uh, unscrew this when you get home, right? Oh, yeah, you I gotta, remember you showing you, me that before. You screw, yeah, yeah, yeah. You screw this part into the wall. And then that'll hang and on. And then gonna, that's going to be sticking out like that. Oh, can you explain this for our subs? Yeah, hang on a second. Let me get a drill. Okay, what are we going to need? You're gonna need this to drive cool, this to drive that into the wall. All right. Now first you gotta find the studs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what do we call this cut? 45 degree angle. No, I mean like why cut it? I mean, isn't there like a name how to how you cut it on the angle uh, or something? Nah, it's a cut. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this is gonna go on the wall like that, you see? Yep. And you're gonna you're gonna find your studs on the window. Mm-hmm. Now right around the frame of the window, so two by four. 
Mm -hmm. so that's an easy one. And then the one in the middle, right below in the center of the window, there should be a cripple stud. So then you drill here, drill here, pre-drill, pre-drill so you don't crack the wood, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and stick that. Now, Jose, pick that box up. My manpower. Let's say that's in there like that. And then this. And then you just, go just drop like that, that right in there. Okay? Let's, let's take it out. Let's take it out. Okay? Let's say that's... Uh, Oh. Let's say that's on the wall. Then you're gonna drop this, boom, right in there. Oh. That's it. So you can take it out, put it in, mm -hmm. remove it, and then this is just to keep the box balanced, or else it's gonna be pitched in. Right. Oh, this is gonna be good. So this is where I'm planning to put those uh, strawberry boxes, right in these two windows in the front, because as the summer goes, or the spring and summer goes, I'm gonna have tons and tons of flowers here. So, it's only right that I can have something in the windows. Could you have done this without an impact drill or would it have been a little more harder? A lot harder without an impact drill. Ooh, that does work. That looks good. I wanted to stain these planter boxes to the ideal wood color that I wanted, but that would have involved me having to buy it. And that's not in the cards right now. So what I did have was just some polyurethane, and that's what I did just to seal the wood because I did not want any of this to warp. I found some leftover plastic walls from a greenhouse that I refused to throw away, so I knew I was gonna be able to use it. I'm gonna cut this plastic to the bottom size of each planter box. There's a reason why I decided to add some plastic on the bottom. First reason is I really don't want this, you know, all the moisture from the soil to warp the, you know, the wood that fast. I already know eventually it will warp, but this will buy me a lot more time. I know for every planter box or for every container, you normally want drainage, and that's absolutely true. Being that this is not silicone, that there is areas that, you know, the water could escape and drain from. But being that the sun is right here, beaming in my eye right now, this will dry up very, very fast. This is the outdoor potting mix that I'm using. Now normally this would not be a problem, but depending on where you're gonna be putting your planter boxes, and also depending on if it's gonna be a boatload of sun in that area, you may have to add a few different things. So I added some vermiculite, which I mean it does you know, offer some drainage, but also it does hold on to a lot of moisture when wet. So I'm gonna add the vermiculite, but I also added a few, you know, some peat moss. So again, if you don't wanna use peat moss because of environmental, blah, 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 then you can use cocoa core. But if you don't have cocoa core, peat moss would work. I did add it because peat moss will add or hold on to a lot of water. And that's exactly what I'm needing for these strawberry planter boxes. Time to start filling up my planter boxes. I'm only going to be filling them up three quarters of the way because we're gonna be adding some fertilizer. All right, the soil that I've been mixing is kind of dry, so I guess no time like the present to find out how the water is gonna react. And also I need to kind of like soak this down because as you add water, you know, it starts to get dense and a lot of the soil starts to compact a little bit. You know what I mean, like it starts to go down. Do we have any leaking? Okay, so I do have drainage, and it's coming from one particular end. So I know exactly where that's coming from, but at least there is some drainage, not anywhere else, but that's cool, that's all right. I only filled this up three quarters of the way. I am gonna be adding some worm castings. You guys know how much I love worm castings. Ah, oh, damn, I just messed up my box. Damn, that sucks. Oh, my box, my box. Okay, that could be worse. No, oh, I'm not a fan of that, but whatever. All right, I'm gonna be just adding some worm castings to that, just for some added nutrients. If you don't have worm castings, it's all good. You can use granular fertilizer if you can still find it and you can still afford it, then you would use that. Whatever you have, you can even use compost, of course, again, that also works out fantastic too. So I'm just gonna add a little more to that and then we can just fill in with more soil. The compost that I added on top is going to be acting, well, of course, like a compost. 
but also it's gonna be acting like a mulch. Being that I get that free compost from the, you know, my local town area, I mean, it's got some like wood chips, it's got some, you know, extra like larger pieces. So it's gonna be acting like a two for one compost and a mulch. And that's what I did to kind of just seal up the top of the planter box. So this is what I did. I added some plastic to the bottom, like a lining of plastic. Uh -huh. Oh, just in the bottom, not on the sides or anything because, eh, yeah, whatever. Well, the water's going to drip through the It did. Anyway. It still drained anyway, oh, so yeah. it's still not bad. Uh-huh. So then, did, that's did it. Did you put anything in the front here for the heat? I, I did not. Maybe some cardboard, some styrofoam? I have. I can well, add. You probably should have done that before you put the soil in That's there. That's also true. The sun's I, I, gonna beam it in there and drying it up. Now, if you don't do that, you might want to run a little irrigation line. Since you have irrigation somewhere around here. Yeah. Run another of your half-inch tubing. Run a little tube through there. You know what? That's also true. I'm gonna add the cardboard. I'm gonna slide some cardboard in there on the well, corner. If you have water continuously dripping in there, a little drip irrigation. Then I should be all right. Yeah, but not this. This Not is that. Every, every foot. What you need is just the regular drip emitters. Oh, I don't have that. Well, I have plenty. Oh, of nice. That. So I'm hoping with the peat moss that I added, the vermiculite that I added, and also with the plastic lining on the bottom that I added also, that it can retain some sort of moisture. Will my planter boxes and all the soil inside of it still dry up? Yeah, it will, unfortunately. So that's where the cardboard could, you know, be a help in retaining some moisture. But in the end, it can still kind of just like dry out. So what I'm thinking about doing is adding some irrigation. I have a lot of those flowers out here, so it needed irrigation. So what I'm going to do is tap into my irrigation tubing that I have out here, run a line all the way to the top of it. Then I'm going to switch the tubing to the every six inches, and that's how I'm going to be watering these boxes. Poof! Problem solved with the water. I mean, of course you could always manually water too. Ooh, cabbage moss. Do you see them? It's cabbage moss season. Okay, there we go. Poof, ADHD moment. Mm, I'm back, I'm back. Will my planter boxes and all the soil inside of it still dry up? Yeah, it will, unfortunately. So that's where the cardboard could, you know, be a help in retaining some moisture. But in the end, it can still kind of just like dry out. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got some good information out of it. You know, there are ways of making stuff happen when there is limited to no funds. We just got to get a little more creative and think outside of the box. If you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing and don't forget about the notification bell. I drop two videos a week, one short and one long. And last but not least, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram where I'm on there all the time. We can chit chat and I love to laugh through memes. Until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. I'll check you out later in the next episode. Peace and love.